Hello, this Intelligence Hub video will cover exchanging data with Ignition. Hybrid Intelligence Hub, interacting with inductive automation Ignition. And I'll start here in Intelligence Hub with connections. And I'm going to move fast. In this video, I'll assume that you have some familiarity with Intelligence Hub. We can obtain data, Intelligence Hub can obtain data with Ignition using the spark plug protocol. So here I have a connection to ignition. The host is identified, the port is identified. And what I can do is I can create connection inputs. And that might be simply, you know, uh, defining the edge node device ID and uh, <clears throat> obtaining data for a specific metric, like in this case is the case count in the dairy simulation and ignition. So that's an example, a simple example. You can also get um, using a wildcard, you know, an entire um, hierarchy of data with many metrics here, including mo motors, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the uh, templatization that you might be familiar with with Intelligence Hub, of course, works with this connection input. So here, what I'm doing is using a parameter to um, define the uh, topic um, dynamically and pull back an array of of uh, values for many motors. You can see there's metadata. I can include metadata. Um, that's an option here as well, and uh, include the properties. Th this is helpful, um, you know, a way to exchange data with uh, Ignition. However, sometimes, you know, spark plug and the requirement to define edge device and, and uh, et cetera, uh, you know, group edge device um, is um, cumbersome, particularly in northbound um, integrations and unnecessary. Also, you know, sometimes it can be, you know, uh, a situation where additional software has to be added with Ignition. And for those reasons, we have some other options. We can also obtain data from Ignition with OPC Way. So here I have a connection to um, Ignition over the OPC Way port. Um, this is just anonymous, but we can we can define the security. Here, you know, I would have the ability to, to, to browse the, um, the namespace. So here I have my dairy simulator. And I can browse, maybe pull back a tag for a motor one amps or even a branch as well. So as you know, if you've, I'm sure you've done this before, you know, I can create a connection input test. So here, just like with uh, Sparkplug, this, you know, means of obtaining data, you know, the case count, I can get that, you know, here we see the tag path and, um, you know, templatization with multiple motors, getting the amps for the multiple motors, include metadata, to tag the tag path, etc. So you, you might be familiar with these capabilities already if you've worked with the uh, OPC UA connection. And I can also write to Ignition um, with an output, you know, an OPC UA output. But what's more interesting and the direction that we're headed with is with our module. So with our module connection, you know, we install a module um, in Ignition. If you're familiar with Ignition modules, and then I can configure that. So here I've already, you know, configured that uh, module ignition module connection, and uh, I've identified the host port. I have a secure connection with a token, and after I've done that, then I can create connection inputs. So again, I have the ability to browse. I can browse, you know, the the namespace, and here I have some, you know, assets that I've created, you know, line one motor, and I can pull that back, and I can create a new connection input. This is the connection I just created. It's just a branch read. And here you see uh, I have the amps and the speed, but we're also um, obtaining the name and the model. So that's um, the underscore name and underscore model is metadata that's defined by Intelligence Hub. You might be familiar with that if you've worked with Intelligence Hub. So this is actually the uh, UDT and the UDT instance. So that's really helpful. So what I can do with that is a number of things. So I'll just kind of backtrack, you know, with the same examples we were showing earlier and, and just show that, you know, this is the same case count for the dairy simulation. You can obtain that. The uh, same templated um, ability with motors. It looks like I am not being very creative here with that. So this is pulling back that array. And then also, um, you know, I can I can pull back at a higher level of the 
namespace and obtain the uh, you know the hierarchy and things that have been defined in ignition. We also can search by UDT. So I can search by, um, I can filter. So this is my motors UDT within this tag um, provider. And here I can search. And what this is going to do is pretty valuable. So this is an array containing the process values for those for the, for the motor as defined by the UDT. But it's also providing the UDT name, UDT instance, and the hierarchical path that's been defined in, in um, Ignition. So that's really helpful. So let's work with this for a little bit. I, I like this connection um, um, input a lot. So what I can do here is I could, I could actually, so this is, I've now moved to a pipeline. And what this pipeline is doing, I've just enabled it is this is polling every five seconds. Alternatively, I could um, use an event-based trigger, and I could pull that um, ignition connection input that we're re referencing here in as a, as a reference, and then I could have an event-based pipeline. But instead, what I'm doing, I'm just simply pulling, pulling every five seconds. I read the data from that. Um, ignition connection input, do some transforms, break up the array, and then I have you know data that's being published, um, in my case, to MQTT, and the hierarchy that's been defined in ignition I'm using to define the topic path dynamically. So here I just have you know that that structured um, topic path for my MQTT broker, and then also um, you know the, the process values and the timestamp. But I could also send this data very easily to a data lake. So if I wanted to send it to Snowflake, for example, so here, you know, I, I obviously I'm publishing it to MQTT, the topic path that's being defined with a dynamic reference. This is just the path that's coming from Ignition. And I could also send this to Snowflake. So if I would do that, I would probably buffer data in front of Snowflake here. I just have a small window size for my buffer just, you know, because I want to, you know, have results quickly. And then also, um, you know, I would need to define the connect, the uh, right stage so here right to snowflake here's the connection that i'm using and we're going to actually create this table so this table doesn't exist yet i have create on so when i wire this up and save it it should work and start writing so it'll need to write five times um it looks like i did something wrong I did not test this earlier which would have probably been a good idea that might have just been because it didn't exist so apparently it has written, it says it's written, and uh, let's go check that out. So there's the data that I'm sending. So I have the UDT instance, the UDT name, the path that was defined in Ignition, Amps, and Speed. So you can see here I could really easily take data from Ignition and, uh, you know, assuming that that UDT modeling is sufficient and write it directly to Snowflake. So not only can we obtain data from Ignition using the module connection, we can also write to, and this is pretty powerful. So here I can define the tag provider and I can indicate create on. So what we're gonna do here is if we have the right syntax, providing an underscore name and underscore model to this connection output, we'll actually create a UDT and also create UDT instances. Obviously we could you know, turn the create off and just update existing as well. But this is powerful. So here I have a pipeline. And uh, what this pipeline will do when I turn it on, it's going to take model data in an instance. So I have an instance um, of for my motors. And I'm getting data. Here's my payload data from. Um, I'm getting data for. Uh, sales order information from a SQL Server query, and then also um, process parameter data from Kep Server EX. I previously mapped you know, these connections um, here, and you can see just you know, in my syntax connect Kep Server EX. And I use that in the pipeline. So what that will do is it's going to create, it will create these um, UDTs and, and uh, UDT instances. So I'll delete these.
and we'll create them when I enable the pipeline. So this pipeline, every 10 seconds, reads that instance information, breaks up the array, adds the hierarchy that's necessary for ignition, and then we write it to MQTT. So I'll just clear this out so we make sure it's obvious what we're doing. And uh, and then write to ignition. Actually, I think I should disable that other pipeline. But anyway, I'll just quickly enable this. So we've just written one time. So with that one write, we should expect that um, this payload was written to ignition, and it was just written again. And we're going to use that payload to uh, create definition in ignition. And here you can see the UDT has been created with the attributes that were defined in the instance. And this is the UDT instance with the structure that we've defined. And these values are being updated every 10 seconds if they change. Um, so that's a quick overview of the ignition um, module connection and intelligence hub module that's installed in ignition. And that allows us to exchange data both read and write. Um, with Ignition, and it, it is powerful in that it fully leverages all the definition that has been previously created in, in Ignition. Thank you very much.